Salutations, everybody. It is Maddie here today coming at you with another review. This time, it's in the form of Necromunda Hired Gun, which I've been playing since this last weekend. Now, if you haven't heard of this game, I wouldn't blame you, and that's no disrespect to the game itself, because it was announced and released in a pretty short period of time. For those unfamiliar, Necromunda Hired Gun is a double-A Doom-like title coming from developer Stream on Studio and publisher Focus Home Interactive, who's really well known for their games priced within the $30 to $50 range which is becoming increasingly alluring thanks to the $70 next-gen price tag on a lot of new games coming out. So even more people are now taking a look at the Focus Home published games because they provide great value and they have a track record of being pretty solid. So does Necromunda Hired Gun fall into that area with its $40 price tag? We're going to get into that, but first... Let's draw the backstory to what exactly this game is, because I'm not a big Warhammer fan, but it is set in the Warhammer universe. I've played Vermintide, but that's about the extent of my Warhammer experience. I always find it interesting with this series, how they just do a million and one spinoffs, and it's such an interesting universe, but there's so many ways to get involved with it. It's something I kind of wish they'd do with Fallout to some extent. So in this little crevice of the Warhammer universe, you're on Necromunda, a hive world, and you are a bounty hunter in the hive cities. So you're going to be in the underbelly of society. The way I kind of described it was the pit in hell in the underbelly of Coruscant. And I know that sounds like a mouthful and it's crazy, but I think it creates the perfect image of what this universe is because you see so many interesting things from the catacombs to the cityscapes to the gothic steampunk hybrid industrialization in full motion. They really do a great job of capturing this universe and making it aesthetically pleasing and having me feel like I want to be a part of what's happening here and, and, and capturing that bounty hunter tome that I really haven't felt since I would say probably the canceled Prey 2 or Star Wars Bounty Hunter. So there's not enough Bounty Hunter games out there and I appreciated it for that. In Necromunda Hired Gun, these hive cities are run by gangs, so their dysfunction is order. When you start to pull pieces out of place, like a Jenga tower, it all flops over. So you have different gangs like the Orlocks, you have the Goliath, Escher, you have Venator, House Delicu, Vansar. I mean, there's so many different gangs, and as you progress through the game, you learn more about them. But I will say that because there are other ways to learn more about Necromunda, they sort of expect you to go in with some type of knowledge. That's not necessarily a problem with the game because they have other titles like Necromunda Under Hive Wars. And I like how that even though that game wasn't a slam dunk according to reviews I saw, they continue to experiment with this universe. In Under Hive Wars, you customize your own gangs. While in Hired Gun, you're running around pretty much slaughtering all of them in the name of hunting down the Silver Talon. And that's sort of the carrot at the end of the stick. Who is the Silver Talon? Why are they killing these people that were close to you? And you're sort of out on this revenge mission, but also collecting your bounty. And what's kind of sad about this story is it seems elusive for most of it. And as it got really interesting, it ended. And so I was kind of disappointed on the story front because you may be looking at the gameplay thinking, well, this clearly isn't a story game, but it's a lot more at the forefront than you'd expect. Now, it never gets quite in the way but it is there enough to demand the player's attention. And I think if they're going to do that, they should tell something compelling. And right when it starts to peel back the onion layers, you know, just, just take those peels off. It just, it's over. And I found that wholeheartedly disappointing because I was pretty invested in the universe. And right when I was going to start getting invested in the characters, boom, it's done. This game took me 10 hours to complete, but I'll say first and foremost that I'm not basing my whole verdict off of the story. I think you can tell just by looking at the gameplay, that's likely not what you'd be coming to this game for. It's all that speed, the gore, the stuff that you'd associate with the game it's easily compared to, which is Doom. So how does it stack up in that department? Once again, this is a $40 double A title, so you have to measure things out a little bit differently. The way I define this part of the game is loot and doom. So it is still doom in its speed and chaos, albeit a less controlled chaos, which can get infuriating at times, and we'll specify why. But the real crevice here that helps separate Necromunda Hired Gun is its loot. There are still pickups galore, kind of like you'd expect in a Doom game, right? Where you saw your armor pickups, your health pickups, ammo pickups. Same thing's kind of happening here, but you're also going to be finding secrets throughout the world that allow you to get new weapons. Weapons that you can take back to Martyr's Den, your hub area, where you can then upgrade your weapons and add new attachments to them like scopes, 
muzzles, laser sights, and so on and so forth. So that's where the separating of the gameplay starts to really occur. And as a framework, I really did appreciate it. And there are moments like this where the game is fast, fun, and exciting. On top of the guns you can loot, you can also get things like status items, lucky charms, which can influence the type of loot you find, the amount of armor you have. You can also, speaking of that, find new armor that you can attach to your character. The real trade-off here is the lacking in interaction with enemies. While you're getting all these different weapons and armor and charms that you can use for your character, it's not like Doom Eternal where, say, you have the flamethrower, which you can use to melt armor, and you have the chainsaw, which can generate ammo. And so you have these different ways to approach where it's almost like every battle is a puzzle of survival, where in Necromunda Higher Gun, it's just use whatever weapon you want, attack as much as you want, and what happens is the loot cycle can start to hurt the game in sort of the early to mid early goings because you'll start to attach yourself to one weapon and even though you want to say use that new shotgun you got it's not upgraded it's not very good so you're not going to be super compelled to use it you're going to have to use that pistol that's a higher rank and so even though maybe a situation will call for something like a shotgun it's not really smart for you to use it because it's just underpowered and the stats start to conflict with the actual enemy design. And since the enemies aren't calling you to do anything really different outside of a couple things we'll specify, like using your grapnel launcher to yank shields off enemies, using a couple of abilities you have through your augmetics to disable shields, there isn't a lot of variety here. So while it is very fun in its pacing, I do think that it struggles with its enemy design. That's because the weapons and tools you get don't encourage you to do much of anything different. It is still fun to swap them out, customize them, change their fire rate, change their pattern of attack, and mix them and match them with your powers. That stuff is awesome, but there is still something kind of missing there. Is it unforgivable? No. Can you sort of get by it because it's a $40 title? Absolutely. But it is something worth noting because you'll start to feel a sense of redundancy as you get into another combat encounter and another combat encounter where you kind of wish they added another layer there maybe peeled back some of the extra loot options and just added a couple of different ways to attack enemies to handle enemies so there was uh, a mental interaction rather than just running around and gunning them down now you also heard me mention powers and this is something that is really big for this game so you get these things called augmetics once again in your hub area martyr's den you can go to the augmetic station with the rogue dock and change all manner of powers for not only yourself but your mastiff in this game you can have pretty much your own dog which you can customize more and more adding all these different metallic parts and you can see them gradually changing over time and they're sort of used to sniff out enemies but take them down hold them down while you handle other hordes on the augmetics front you'll get stuff like blast shock crush and each of these can be used in different scenarios crush is great against big enemies like the goliaths the ogre like enemies that are coming your way that have a lot of health whereas blast can eviscerate a group of enemies very quickly and shock is good for moments like when an enemy has a shield near you or a haywire blast which can completely disable that shield and those shielded enemies especially in the early going can be infuriating but once you sort of dismantle that there are cooldowns there and that's what I was talking about. It rewires back to that enemy design where once you've figured it out and you go, okay, cool, there's patterns to how I take down these enemies, the long cooldowns, even when abilities are fully upgraded, can sort of handcuff you a bit where you have to dodge and avoid action a little bit until things cool down because your weapons can only do so much. And especially in certain instances where the looted weapons are holding you back, it's still fun. It's still a good time, but there's just certain things that make you feel more limited than you really should be in this type of game. As you complete these missions, you're going to get ranks at the end of the missions and per enemies you kill and things you do in said mission, how many times you die will determine the amount of credits you get, which can be spent on the aforementioned shops. I will say this is one of the few times where I felt like the game really got its economy right. I thought it was fun to go into these levels 
kill a ton of enemies you see the credits building up kind of like Killzone mercenary on the playstation vita this game is fantastic because everything you do gives you money it sort of has that dna to it and that's a game i'm a complete sucker for so you have that here and it really nails that economy because you're always coming back and having something worthwhile to spend it on is there enough to keep spending yes once i finished the game i had most of my character upgrade but there was still a good handful of upgrades remaining for my character and so this does open the door for a little bit more replayability as you dive into the secondary jobs where you go back to old missions and they're sort of retooled with like destroy the ammo cache or hold off this horde of enemies and you play them a little bit differently and it lets you just focus on the gameplay and less on the story and i think it's quite interesting for that and it makes it enjoyable and you still have a little bit of a progression loop there but overall i think they did a good job nailing the economy and making sure the things you spend money on are indeed worthwhile of course with a game that's compared to doom we got to talk a little bit about the gore this game is pretty gushy and mushy <laughs> it'll you'll, you'll throw a grenade and you'll see some enemy blow up and their intestines will pop out and if you're in a room it'll start to hang from the ceiling i mean it's a pretty grotesque attention to detail there but i think it helps kind of sell the idea that you're in this really crunchy ugly part of the universe in warhammer so i did appreciate it for that there are things that i did appreciate less and even though i was sort of alluding to them there's more direct complaints and one of them the most major one of them all is the monster closets this game brought me back to call of duty campaigns in like 08 in the worst way possible so for those who are unfamiliar with what monster closets are in video games it's when an enemy continuously spawns and spawns until you meet a certain point of progression same things happening here what's even worse though is it sort of breaks the the fun of the action when you see enemies spawning in directly in front of you it happens a lot especially during boss fights and it is entirely frustrating when i'm trying to find my way through a secondary job or something and i keep having these enemies coming at me coming at me coming at me endlessly and i'm trying to figure out where do i go where do i go where do i go oh, i gotta defend myself again because enemies don't go down super fast it kind of goes back to the targeting of the weaknesses you're handcuffed essentially and when you're trying to figure out where to go you can die at times pretty quickly which is fine i like a good challenge but when you're getting lost and the enemies should be despawning but they continue to spawn and oftentimes right in front of you it can make you want to tear your hair out this game is overall just really buggy and needs another patch or two this carries into the pc build which i have a decent pc i'm not going to sit here and puff my chest i'll be like 30 80 life baby I'm, I'm not rolling in there yet yet time will tell but right now as it stands this pc build was wildly inconsistent there were times it was at a smooth locked 60 and there were times that this game was dipping down to below 30 which does not happen for me and i was playing this on medium settings so i found that once again pretty disappointing i know i don't have the most powerful rig of all time but i have a good enough rig to run these types of budget titles at a high setting and the fact that even on medium i could not tweak it enough to get this to sit at 60 consistently was pretty frustrating for me and i'm usually not the big tech guy who's breaking down on these companies going i need smooth 60 all the time but it was dipping way too often for my liking i'm not going to show them here but there are also vertigo inducing menus i don't want to sound like a whiny baby but i've struggled with vertigo for a number of years it can be induced by certain visuals and how they are and there are menus in this game that will literally go like this for no reason they just move and it started to give me vertigo so for those of you who are easily triggered with that stay far away this game will mess you up and I, it was a pretty awkward feeling for me i was like wow i've never had this happen before right like i've had games where certain sensations would trigger it. that's fine but this was a menu that had no reason to be moving but was actively like waving around like a boat or a train or something like that where i was like whoa okay i'm starting to move in my own chair right now please do keep that in mind if you're like me a little bit there's a couple of pacing problems that i do want to tack on here because while i'm a fan of moments of respite it felt very out of place here um there would just be moments you're running around and literally nothing is happening and it's not even in like a i need to kill things kind of way i need action i need combat no that's not even what i'm talking about like there's no collectibles or exploration happening in between encounter a and encounter b so when you're just walking no one's talking nothing's happening that's all that's happening you are just walking and so the moment of respite becomes this awkward sense of pacing this also ties into sometimes when combat's happening you have all these in your face takedown animations that the camera can bug out and sort of pull you out of the action 
There are other times that the takedown animations are way too long. And so once you pull out of them, the enemies have completely readjusted and now you're getting shot from all angles. It's very easy for your character to get cornered. And when you get cornered, there's no AOE attack that's gonna back them off of you. That's really effective, especially if there are a bunch of big, heavily armored enemies. So these type of pacing issues can actually start to intrude on the gameplay front and become overall very frustrating. Which leads me to just general gameplay objectives. So throughout the game, you'll sometimes collect batteries and throw them inside generators. There's one point where there's like a very small puzzle you have to figure out by analyzing your environment. There's so moments here where the game's really at its best because you're doing a thing in between that point A and point B. And if they had a couple more collectibles and things to do like that, that'd be great. But you're oftentimes filling these generators with batteries and that puzzle that I mentioned only shows up once and so the game struggles with that uh where i know a lot of people took issue with my complaints of doom 2016 where i said there's not enough happening here people were like the combat's great though you just need a carrot at the end of the stick you're an idiot it's like no there's just not anything happening in a moment where it feels like something should be happening it feels off for the pace the game is established so know that this game shares more of a common issue i feel with doom 2016 and because Eternal came out, it was so masterful. I love that game. Top five game of the year last year. Um, you know, it just kind of shines a brighter spotlight on a lot of the problems with Necromunda Hired Gun. So that brings us into, lastly, sound, which I thought was solid. It was good enough for what it was doing. Guns overall have power to them because they come across quite bassy, as you can hear right now. Each gun has their own audio quirks, which helps separate them, like plasma charging after a reload, which I thought was kind of nice. Uh, on the other front, the music is this kind of pounding metal uh, that, once again, uh, closely associates itself to Doom, which I don't think helps separate it from the pack. Sometimes it does this more electronic, or it does like a little guitar riff, and it's just that, and I really liked that take. I kind of wish they went more with that because it fit the bounty hunter feel more than just this like heavy metal. It felt at times like someone looked at Doom and said, let's just make that, which is totally fine by the way. Make art that inspires you from other art. I'm totally for that. I just wish in the music department, maybe there's a couple more separating qualities because you see glimmers of that where I think it's at its best. And then it kind of goes back into its Doom shadow. The last thing of audio I'd like to mention is there's a lot of repeat encounter lines that kind of put Skyrim to shame. You know, never should have come here. Um, or is that Fallout 3? I don't know. I might be mixing those two up. Uh, but anyway, you hear a lot of the same thing like, this is Orlock territory or something along the lines of, who are you? You, you hear that a lot from every different gang. It's like, how can the story say I'm this hunted bounty hunter that, that everyone wants to take out now because I'm causing so much strife for these gangs? but yet they don't know who I am when I first, I don't know. It can be a little annoying. So I have a lot of clear criticisms for the game, but overall it was a fun time. Is it worth your $40? No, uh, definitely wait for a sale. This game needs a couple of patches. It's way too buggy. The PC build was not encouraging in my opinion. I think there is a lot to like here. I saw that Necromunda Underhive Wars was met with some middling reviews where people said, hey, the universe is cool here, but the game really isn't overall that great. I think here you have a pretty good core. There are some drawbacks here, not so bad that you should never play this game, but I think for its $40 price tag, that is a healthy area. Um, I can't speak for Warhammer fans who are maybe very hardcore and really want to try this thing out. I can only speak to people like me who are getting into Warhammer, trying it out here or there. For you, I'm just saying that right now, please wait for a sale. And I would suggest for those of you who are Warhammer fans, look up other reviews as I always recommend. Uh, checking out fans of Warhammer. I know Carrick of ACG, my very good friend, he is a Warhammer fan. So he could probably give you an opinion from that standpoint. But for me, this is a wait for a sale around the, I'm going to say $25 to $30 price tag. Not a deep sale, but enough where you can play it. You can accept its flaws and say, all right, I was happy with that. It has a lot of meat on it. There's a good amount of content here for the price tag. 
It's just got enough nagging issues where I said, hey, let's hold off on this one. So that does it for my review with Necromunda Hired Gun. I'm looking forward to seeing your thoughts in the comments down below, so let me know what you're thinking. And other than that, be sure to follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram. Those links are in the description down below. Big thank you to all the patrons as we continue to grow all of the original content here. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.